Have you noticed that more and more patients are suffering with hair loss or hair thinning? Hi, my name is Dr. Manav Bauer. I'm a cosmetic physician and the medical director here at Time Clinic. And I've got eight years of experience in medical aesthetics. Understanding hair loss. So what are the common causes of hair loss in men and women? Well, these can include genetics. So if your parents lost their hair or their hair became thin at a young age, there's a high chance that you may uh, go thin or lose your hair early as well. Also hormones, so as things change, for example in menopause, you may find that you suffer from a thinning of hair or hair loss. Stress is a common cause and also certain medical conditions can create hair loss or thinning as well. How does hair thinning differ between genders? Well, we've got our male pattern baldness where uh, the men become bald across the top and the crown, leaving this area here with hair, and that's very common. With female patients, what we tend to see is a diffuse thinning or a thinning along the midline, around the sides and the crown as well. So we see a lot of patients in clinics suffering with hair thinning or hair loss or increased shedding following, let's say for example, COVID. So COVID really impacted the hair quality of a lot of patients. Also postpartum, so patients who have given birth, if you think about the change in hormones, the stress on the body itself, we see a lot of patients coming in where their hair has really thinned or they've lost a lot of hair and it's not coming back. And also through the menopause, so pre-menopause, perimenopause, and post-menopause, again with the changes in hormone, the stresses on the body, we're seeing a lot of patients come in with uh, or suffering with hair loss and hair thinning. Now this can be all parts of the scalp, it can be diffuse hair thinning, it can be loss or thinning for the temple area, the actual hairline itself, the midline, or the overall like the top part of the head or the crown itself. Again, we're seeing a lot more of this. We lead a lot more busy and stressful lives. So actually, hair loss is a sign and symptom of a lot of what's going on around us right now. So what's the early signs of hair loss that you should be looking out for? Well, we have something called shedding, where when you're brushing your hair, you may shed more than you normally do. So keep an eye on how much hair is in your hairbrush or in your shower. And if you feel as though it's increasing, I would definitely seek medical attention. So here's an overview of the treatments that we offer here at Time Clinic. And these are all non-surgical treatments and consist of calcium growth factors, as well as platelet-rich plasma, which is known as PRP. What is PRP? Let's start with that. So platelet-rich plasma is a process where you will come into the clinic. We'll take a small sample of blood, which is very comfortable. We'll use a little machine that we've got to spin the blood, and that allows us to take out the plasma cells and growth factors. And then we can use them to introduce to the scalp, and that helps to stimulate growth. So calcium is a product that comes in vials. It's a serum and the product is derived from a sample taken from a red deer in New Zealand, it's umbilical cord. So it's a very ethically sourced product. Now what it is, is umbilical cord stem cell derived growth factors. So we've got an abundance of growth factors in a serum from one sample taken many, many years ago. And we can use this in, the sim in a similar way to PRP. So why choose PRP or calcium over other treatments in the market? Well, using these growth factors, we can really create a safe treatment for you and really stimulate those hair follicles to start producing more thicker and an increased quantity of hair. So how many treatments are typically needed for both PRP and calcium treatment? Well, with PRP, we normally say anywhere from six treatments, and those are in-clinic treatments. And so you'll come in to see us and have the treatment every, every month, so once a month for at least six months. Now with calcium treatment, it differs ever so slightly, and we have a number of protocols. And the most common protocol is you'll come into clinic, 
we'll treat you with the serum where we put the serum, we apply the serum, we use a, a gentle dermostan, reapply the serum, and then you go home. For the next five weeks, you'll do exactly the same thing once a week, and then you'll come back into clinic in week seven and we'll redo that cycle. So you have two in-clinic treatments and 10 treatments at home that you do on your own. So what are the key differences between PRP and Calisim? Well, PRP has been used for many, many years and it involves your own cells, essentially, which is great for some patients. Calisim uses an externally derived source of growth factors and so the actual treatment's simpler it's more of a comfortable treatment and it's less, it's more frequent. So it's every week as opposed to PRP being once a month. So which treatment is best suited to different types of hair loss? Well, they both work and that's the beauty of them. PRP can work, but we have to factor in the time, the length that it will take. So remember it's one treatment a month for six months before we start to see some results and also budget as well. So who are these treatments for? Well, both treatments can generally be used for anyone suffering with hair thinning or hair loss, regardless of age and gender. However, one thing to bear in mind is it's much better to start the treatments earlier because if there are no follicles left, there's nothing to stimulate and increase that hair growth. So I would definitely get in there earlier for treatment because it may not work a little bit later on down the line. So we've mainly focused on hair loss and thinning on the scalp, but actually there are three other areas I just want to discuss. And the first one is hair loss on the facial area. So we've seen men that have come in with patches of hair loss or hair thinning and they really want to grow a beard. So things are changing as they're aging or due to stress. Now we can use these same growth factors either calisim or PRP, platelet-rich plasma, to stimulate the hair growth of the beard. And so that may help if that's something that you're suffering with. Another two areas that we can treat where patients suffer with hair loss or thinning are the brow area and the lash area. Now this may be, again, genetical. It may be too much plucking, so the frequency, or it may be pulling out the eyelashes or having uh, extensions placed and as they come off the lash uh, comes off as well so if we need to increase the strength the quality so the thickness or the intensity of the hair in the brow or the lash we can also help with that hair at time clinic are these treatments safe they're absolutely safe for all patients there are minimal risk factors such as bruising bleeding infection redness however they are very very rare the treatments are comfortable and we see excellent results in our clinic. But the important thing is these are suitable for patients who are looking for non-surgical treatments. So it's slightly different to a hair transplant or surgery. So that's just something to be aware of too. How long does it take to see results? Well, generally most patients start seeing a difference within three to six weeks. Now that may be subtle signs such as the hair feels thicker or there's less shedding of hair. But the biggest results probably come a month or two after the end of your course of treatments. How about aftercare? What do you need to do after treatment? Well, I would certainly not wash your hair on the day. We want everything to absorb into the scalp. I would avoid extreme heat such as saunas, swimming pools for a good few days. Remember the tiny little micro holes that we've created or micro channels we've created. They take a few days to heal up and we want all the serum or the PRP to be absorbed and passed through those growth channels to really get to those hair follicles. Maintenance of treatment. Ideally, we would continue with one or two treatments every six to 12 months. But remember, it just depends on you, the results, and how often you're able to come in. But one thing I would certainly suggest to remember is, as an example, let's say if you go to the gym and you get to a physical condition you're happy with, we need to maintain that. If we stop going to the gym, we'll go back to the way we are. So in the same way, it's really important to maintain your treatments to maintain your results. So to conclude, these are fantastic 
safe treatments with lots and lots of clinical studies showing good results. And we've had great results in clinic as well. So if you've got hair thinning or hair loss, or if you've had these treatments before, or if you're just interested, we'd love to hear from you. So please do like and comment below. If you found this educational, please hit the subscribe button. And if you feel as though this may help somebody else, a friend or family member, please do send it across to them. And we'd love for them to hear and comment as well.